Hi, it's Panda Movies here. Today, I'm going to explain the Spanish horror movie called Veronica. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. Enjoy the video. The movie starts in 1991 in the middle of an emergency call to the emergency services from a young girl. Before the connection is cut off, she shouts in panic about her brother Antonito and something coming to get him. The movie then jumps three days in the past. Veronica, a 15-year-old girl, shares a home in Vallecas, a working-class neighborhood of Madrid, with her mother and three siblings. Veronica is in charge of her younger siblings, twins Lucia and Irene, and Antonito, since their mother works long hours at a bar to support the family after their recently deceased father. One day in class, Veronica's teacher recounts how some prehistoric tribes utilized eclipses to perform human sacrifices and conjure evil spirits on the day of the solar eclipse. And because they wanted to take learning to another level, Veronica, her friend Rosa, and their classmate Diana enter the basement to conduct a seance using an Ouija board because that is the best thing to do during a very rare eclipse, while the rest of the school congregates on the roof to watch the eclipse, like normal people. Diana wants to contact her deceased partner who perished in a motorbike accident while Veronica wants to contact her deceased father. The board responds right away, but as the glass cup gets too hot to touch, Rosa and Diana pull their hands back. When the eclipse occurs, the cup shatters while Veronica's hand is still holding it, cutting her finger and dripping blood onto the board. Rosa leans forwards to listen to Veronica's repeated whispers as she goes mute and eventually lets forth a horrible scream. After passing out, Veronica wakes in the school nurse's office, who tells her she probably passed out from iron deficiency. Veronica then starts having strange experiences, probably due to iron deficiency. She feels as though an occult force is keeping her from eating her dinner, girl. It's just iron deficiency. Her body begins to show bite and claw marks, and she starts to hear odd noises, and her friends start to avoid her, which is why you should never skip your iron people. At this point, Veronica is no longer convinced that what she has is only iron deficiency, so she returns to the school basement in search of answers and encounters Sister Death, the school's ancient blind nun, who reprimands her for engaging in such risky behavior and reveals that the seance linked a dark spirit to her, which is why she must defend her siblings. Yep, definitely would have settled with iron deficiency. The nun comes to her rescue, but nothing happens despite the nun's attempts to get the ghost to leave her. In order to protect her siblings, Veronica draws Viking symbols, but the devil destroys them. The ghost is then able to choke Lucia, and Veronica tries to help her only for Lucia to claim that she was the one who was suffocating her. The audacity! As the good sister that she is, Veronica does not retaliate and just decides to head to bed. But that night she has a dream in which she is being eaten by her siblings. When she awakens, she just blames it on her period. She decides to clean the stains immediately when she discovers burn marks on the underside of her mattress. Later, she discovers a sizable burn mark in the form of a human body on each of the children's mattresses. When Veronica asks Sister Death for help, the nun shares how she once saw evil spirits when she was younger and purposefully went blind in an attempt to halt the visions. Sister Death informs her that by righting her wrongs, she can make the ghosts leave. Veronica discovers how crucial it is to bid the ghost farewell at the end of the seance. She invites Rosa and Diana to assist her in holding a second seance after attending a party at Rosa's house, but they turn her down, as they should. Rosa adds that Veronica said she would pass away in five days in a whisper during the seance. She chooses to hold the seance with her younger siblings out of desperation. She instructs Antonito to paint the walls with protective symbols, but he accidentally flicks to the incorrect page and paints invocational symbols instead. The spirit refuses to say farewell when she asks it to. As the spirit kidnaps Antonito, she manages to reclaim him and escapes with Lucia and Irene, then contacts the police. She discovers, however, in a mirror at the exit, that she was only daydreaming about holding Antonito. When she comes back, her brother is calling her name while hiding in a closet but he refuses to go with her when she finds him. So, what were you calling her for? Veronica realizes she has been possessed by the demon her entire life and has been hurting her siblings under its control when she looks in the mirror and sees the demon. 
She tries to cut her own throat to end the possession, but the demon stops her. When the cops arrive, they discover her unconscious and being attacked by an unidentified force. A terrified investigator watches the scene as the medics bring her and Antonito away. The detective is notified that Veronica has passed away as he observes a framed picture of her catching fire. He recalls strange paranormal activity taking place in Madrid in 1996, five years later. On the first police record in Spain where a police officer certifies having witnessed paranormal activity, it is explained that the movie is based on actual events.